Hi, and welcome back to CNM Glass Videos with me, Clarissa Sorensen Unruh. Um, today, we're going to do a topic that spans all of my chemistry classes. And this is particularly interesting because it actually spans all of science. Problem that was brought up to me about two years ago, maybe a year ago, was that K through 12 students really did not understand that science is an iterative process, that we do the same things over and over again, because the flow charts that we have currently for science are very linear. They're very this, then that, then that, then that. And you really never follow the arrows back. So my question was, how many times would we like to reiterate a, an experiment? And my thought was infinite. If we had our best thought, we would want to reiterate it infinite numbers of times. And so this is what this is meant to say. So we're going to start right here with the observation. The observation here is when you make uh, some kind of observation, it can be any observation for science. Um, basically the idea here is that you're going to say something along the lines of this happens, right? So you're looking at nature saying this happens. The hypothesis adds something because it adds the idea that um, it happens because, right? So when you're thinking about things, you're thinking about things in terms of this is going to happen because of some reason. Okay, so if we start at literature, the literature review and observation, so your observation should come with a bit of a literature review to make sure that, you know, someone ha else hasn't delved, delved? <laughs> hasn't dived into that one. Um, we're going to go from the observation, we're going to follow the infinity symbol up to hypothesis. And then we're going to use, once we have our hypothesis, we're going to design an experiment that will allow us to test that. And so I'm showing some arrows here. These arrows could technically go backwards and forwards, but we're doing them, um, you know, one directional at the moment. From the experiment, once you run the experiment, you'd like to know whether it worked or not, right? So you need to get some analysis. You need to look at the analysis. You need to look at your results. You need to look at your data collection and figure out, hey, did that actually do what I thought it did or didn't it, did it not, okay? After many, many, many experiments and um, analyses and results, then you can start to think about a theory or a model for that. Now here's where it's really interesting. Your books, uh, generally general chemistry books, start to talk about um, laws. And what's super interesting here is that laws really are part of science. So in, in old school, when we used to do this in old books, what we would say is we would say the law, I'm getting out of the way a little bit so that you can see it. The law was um, backed up by quantitative data. So in other words, you had numbers, you had uh, some serious experiments with some um, mathematical um, analysis based off of them, and you could really talk about things. And theories really described behavior, which is really interesting because in science, um, particularly in chemistry, what kind of behavior were you describing exactly? Um, and so theories were more the purview of like psychologists and that kind of um, psychologists, sociologists, that grouping. And um, we really in chemistry were more about laws. Problem is that we use these kind of interchangeably as if they're the same thing. And that's because the real problem is, is that today they kind of are. We are no longer interested in just laws or theories. We are interested in something that has predictive power, something that will allow us to say, not only did this happen, and it happened over and over again, but I can use the data that I got here to predict something else, something like it to happen again. And that's what we're really interested in. And those models are going to include a description of behavior and some quantitative data and hopefully a lot of both and so that's kind of why it's a little bit confusing today is that really today we're wanting to get this piece right we want those models more than anything else yes we want to describe behavior yes we want to have quantitative data 
to back up our um, ideas, right? We want quantitative and qualitative data. We'd ideally like it all. And then we would like to be able to predict something new based off of that. And not something radically new, right? <laughs> something way off what, from what we did. We want to predict something that is close to what we did, but is a little bit outside of what we did. All right. When you think about theories, theories and models, of course, have to be reiterated by even more experiments. So nothing in science is set in stone, right? Theories and models are about as close as we have, but that doesn't mean that that's the end all be all of all things. And then we would ideally go back to the observations and make new observations to reiterate the whole thing over again. So ideally, we would want to repeat the scientific method infinite numbers of times. Along with this kind of idea is the idea that really we should have some reiterative processes that don't include the experiment, but that just double check that we really did what we thought we did, right? So in terms of your theory or model, your theory or model should always have some kind of reiteration. Let's do that there. Reiteration with your hypothesis, right? You should have some kind of moment where you can say, OK, the model that I came up with, yes, has some kind of explanatory power that is based off of my hypothesis, right? And then you should also have some kind of reiterative process between these two. Your analysis and your results should reiterate your original observation and your original literature review. So while this looks a little bit like an oval with an infinity in the midst of it, really the key piece here is that yes, we would want to repeat it, but there's a reason why experiments are in the middle. They are so important that we need to keep doing them over and over and over again to really have the explanatory, explanatory power that we would like. Okay. So that's a new idea for the scientific method. Until next time, we'll talk more and hopefully use this.